Welcome to Germany. In the early 5th century, Scandinavian people came to Europe. In 850 BC, these original Scandinavians formed into tribes and began migrating within the continental mainland, this being modern Denmark, northern Germany, and from there spreading west, east, and south. Scandinavians that now resided on the mainland soon began to develop an identity separate of that of their Scandinavian homeland. These new mainlanders were called Germanus by the Romans, this being the origin of which modern-day Germans received their name. The pre-Roman influence saw tribes with heavy tendencies towards mysticism, as well as a reverence to a pantheon of gods such as Thor. <laughs> These tribes later aided in the collapse of the Roman Empire. Following its collapse, some tribes, such as the Goths and Vandals, moved to conquer territories in the Iberian Peninsula, Italy, and Byzantine. This period of time was known as the Age of Migration. Others stayed to establish a German medieval kingdom. However, the German people were still very tribalistic. They resisted conflict brought by the Romans, such as law, organization, and scholarship, even after they became the ruling class in most of Central and Western Europe. They operated on a clan-based system, ruled under oral law, an offense committed by one German to another was settled chiefly through the blood feud, exacting revenge on the offender. This is similar to the eye for an eye concept seen under Hammurabi's code. During the 8th century, the Frankish kingdom conquered all of the Germanic people. They converted many to Christianity and instituted Salic law over them. Originally, Salic law dealt primarily with criminal penalties and procedures, with some civil law included. Under these codes, Criminal law ranged all the way from petty theft to rape and murder. If anyone shall have killed a free Frank or barbarian living under Salic law, and it have been proved on him, he shall be sentenced to 8,000 denaries. Death was not a common punishment under Salic law. Rather, they sought out equitable compensation for the damages done in the form of money. Civil law functioned in a very likewise fashion. If anyone wished to migrate to another village, and if one or more who live in that village do not wish to receive him, if there be only one who objects, he shall not have leave to move there. One of the more fascinating parts of Salic law is how they handled crimes against adults versus crimes against children. For example, if a child was kidnapped, the perpetrator of the crime would only have to pay money as compensation for the crime they committed. Whereas, if an adult female was kidnapped, or even male, the perpetrator could be sentenced to death. Now, in modern day law, it doesn't really matter whether you are a child or adult. The law pretty much stays the same in regards to kidnapping and death. But in regards to who is actually affected by the crime, the punishments are rather similar. So it, we can tell from this that Salic law valued their elders in a way that they did not really value their children. So I thought that was just one of the more interesting parts of Salic law in connection to how we view our modern day law in equality between the younger and the older. A grieved party seeking redress on any matter would request to appear before the king. He would then determine if the law must be enforced. Salic law was reflective of gender equality and social status within the Frank kingdom. Women, for example, were legally prohibited from ascending to the throne and Frank-born citizens had more legal precedence than their barbarian counterparts. One prominent ruler during this time was Charlemagne. Charlemagne was known as the father of Europe and is believed to have ensured the survival of Christianity in the West. His main goal had been to unite the German peoples un into one kingdom, and he did this through the enforcement of Salic legal code. In the 8th century, the Frankish kingdom broke down into various principalities following the end of centralized rule. The grandsons of Charlemagne divided his empire into three parts in the Treaty of Verdun of 843, the eastern realm being where modern-day Germany is. The German peoples then unified into a loosely consolidated German The German kingdom becomes the Holy Roman Empire in the 10th century after entering into a partnership with the Pope in exchange for their freedom from the Papal States. For the next 850 years, the title of Holy Roman Empire was held by these German sovereigns. The Holy Roman Empire was made up of Germanic principalities and was ruled through a secular ecclesiastic partnership between the Pope and its Emperor. The Holy Roman Empire was ruled by the Emperor who divinely sanctioned kin rule within the Germanic tradition of elected kingship. 
German princes within the Holy Roman Empire operated for the most part autonomously, but also in cooperation with the emperor when they had like-minded purposes. Under Roman common law, the German people saw a much more democratic way to met out justice. Roman law, as embodied in Corpus Juris Civilis, was received in Germany from 15th century onward. However, German law was also codified in writing under the influence of Roman law. In Germanic Europe, every man was tried by the laws of his own land, whether Roman, Slavic, Frank, or any other. Visigothic law codes demonstrated the differences between Romanic and German laws while also signifying the influence that Roman law had on them. Within German society, women and men were seen to be as greater equals than in Roman society. This reflected into Germanic civil law. Anyone left without heirs has the power to do what they want with their possessions. Under Roman law, only males could make a will, but as we can see with Germanic laws, women had more legal rights. The end of the Napoleonic Wars also signified the end of the Holy Roman Empire. Following its dissolution, the German Confederation was created by France. The North German Confederation was a loose consolidation of 39 German states. The North German Constitution of April 1867 created a national parliament with universal suffrage for men above the age of 25. This demonstrated the transition of Germanic law from feudal to a more democratic form of law. Yet during this time, liberalists were still pressing for a representative government. In 1871, Prussia won against France in the Franco-Prussian War. The war compelled the independent German states to consolidate into a unified German nation. German nationalism rapidly shifted from its liberal and democratic character in 1848 to Prussian Prime Minister Otto von Bismarck's authoritarian realpolitik. Bismarck wanted to unify the rival German states to achieve his aim of a conservative Prussian-dominated German nation. He accomplished this after three military successes. Throughout the nation, new civil and criminal codes were being adopted in lieu of national needs and culture. Codes of criminal and civil procedure were adopted in 1877 under the Germanic Civil Code Doctrine. Sale in the case of judicial execution or insolvency. The right of preemption is excluded if the sale is made by way of judicial execution or of assets in an insolvency. This is just one more example of the type of civil law that's developing in Germany. German states that had developed for the most part as legally independent were now introduced to common civil code. In 1871, a common criminal code was introduced, and in 1877, common court, civil, and criminal procedures were also introduced, though the states were not required to adopt any of these measures until in 1881, the first commission was established to produce a common civil code for the entire empire. This same empire that had been together for almost 80 years of unification now split into East and West Germany. East Germany fell under a communist rule while West Germany fell under democratic. Though this division ended in 1990 with the reunification of Germany. Today, Germany operates under a democratic federal republic. Federal meaning that individual states maintain political sovereignty. This is consistent with the tradition of autonomous principalities, such, see, such as seen in the Germanic Holy Roman Empires of the Middle Ages. In the last 30 years, Germany has been known as a nation of immigrants. They have been struggling to accommodate the mass influx of immigrant population into their country. Though the U.S. has faced similar issues and still continues to face issues with immigration, Germany does not have the same history of integration that the U.S. does. They are not the melting pot that we seem to be. But to atone for the crimes of the Third Reich, Article 16-2 of West German's Basic Law was created, and it states that German countries will offer asylum to those wishing to escape political persecution. In the beginning of the 1980s, this freely offered asylum was not invested upon by many immigrants, and Germany saw low numbers of immigrants into their country. But in the mid-1980s, Germany saw a mass influx of immigrants into their country, from, specifically from Iran and Lebanon. But in 1993, these regulations were tightened. Currently, Germany is seeing a mass influx of immigrants of the Muslim descent. In September, the Germans tightened up their regulations requirements 
And this being said, it is stated that now one must prove that they can speak and write in German in order to enter the country. Recently, Chancellor Merkel received a lot of heat for stating that we needed to protect the current German cultures and values. And through this, it is necessary that we must tighten up these regulations. Others have argued, though, that America and other such countries do not have these regulations or requirements in order to enter into the country. This is just an example of the political heat and the political controversy that Germany has been facing over the issue of immigration. Though, it can also be said that the immigrants provide a vital source for the workforce in Germany, and the economy would not be as successful as it is now without their aid. Also, Germany is experiencing one of the lowest birth rates in Europe, and without the immigrant population, their birth rates would not maintain a, sta a stable level. So as Germany is facing the issue of immigrant population into their immigration has been for the last 30 years, and it continues to be today one of the most hotly debated political issues in Germany.